Hello, this is uh, John Canalopoulos from our office here in Athens, Greece. Very interesting case to show you. We've showcased this problem before. This is a young gentleman with um, keratoconus who has had uh, transplants for a long time now. Now, pay attention to, this is the left uh, graft host interface inferiorly. He has about two adapters in his correction here. We can also see the traumatized iris doing trephination back then. And again, these are um, almost 30 years old, year old grafts. And this is the right eye. And see how there's a gap between the uh, graft and the host. And uh, you can also see on the slit how this area has thinned. And you guessed right, he has a significant astigmatism in this eye. Uh, the cell counts, which are important, are not bad on the uh, 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 right eye. And remember, this is a graft that is 30 years old. So I realize it's under a thousand, but it's over 500. And th these are relatively good cell counts for a graft that old. They're worse than the left eye, which is his better seeing eye. And what concerns us is that there's a little bit of polymegathism, which shows there may be something active going on. So we're gonna treat this with corticosteroids. Um, but the key thing here is if we look at the uh, uh, topographies on that right eye, and you can see that area of dehiscence that lies between three o'clock and seven o'clock corresponds with this tremendous astigmatic step, uh, 70 here, 40 here. So we have a step about uh, uh, 30 diopters, and this is impossible to correct with uh, spectacles, very difficult contact lenses. The pachymetry map is the key here. You can see how thin this area is, although it falls right at the edge of the um, pentacam, which is nine millimeters in diameter. If we could um, capture a little bit more peripherally here, we would see um, the dehiscence area being extremely thin. So uh, uh, another worrisome thing here is that this has changed from 2016 that we've seen him uh, and we asked him not to rub his eyes. He does it during his sleep. And this is him uh, today, four years later. And this is the difference. He has dehisced uh, to cause an extra 10 daughters uh, of steepening in this area. So we need to intervene here and the intervention here will be uh, the technique that we've described uh, to gut out this area from uh, three o'clock to about eight o'clock, resuture the area. So we'll need about um, uh, eight, maybe seven, eight interrupted sutures. Um, soak the cornea here with uh, Vibex Extra, so higher concentration of riboflavin, and then flash cross-link this area to stabilize the graph host interface. The sutures will come out uh, three to six months later if needed, and we'll get a, a, a better um, cornea uh, adhesion to the host. And uh, even if in the future, uh, this patient requires an endothelial keroplasty, at least the uh, uh, collagen and the uh, tectonic part of the cornea will be very well uh, rehabilitated. And again, the key element here is to stop eye rubbing. If patients cannot or they can't recall how they sleep, we provide them special goggles or even uh, shields to use at night in order to avoid this. It's interesting that uh, this is not present left eye. See how nicely the host thickness here is almost against the graft um, thickness. So this will draw our attention to the way he sleeps. He probably sleeps on his right side and on his uh, knuckles. Uh, again, uh, this is John Canalopoulos. I hope you find this interesting. This is a uh, very interesting differentiating point for a patient who's seeking uh, uh, rehabilitation post-transplant because the last thing we want to do here is a refractive procedure on this cornea and exacerbated the thinning between graft host interface even more. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks so much for your attention.